half of the value of these workshops are the people that this brings together. Where else can you get this kind of diversity and mix? Uh, and the kinds of backgrounds people bring are genuinely enriching for this workshop. I hope we're going to be together for a week. We choose a setting like this so there's a place where we have some space to ourselves and get to eat together. And I do believe you're going to experience, you're going to learn as much from one another as from uh, the workshop and the trainers. And um, welcome all. I had a lot of the generic skills. I also teach mediation at the UConn Law School. But this gave me a structure to apply to my practice, a way of getting in some real practical approaches, uh, helped me out a lot with the forms, with the procedures. And it really allowed me to present it to clients with a much more uh, professional way. The role plays, I thought, were key, where Carl and other trainers coached us as we role played the role of mediator and part of the family um, to learn to be able to hear the underlying issues underneath the emotional content I think is the most important part so that you can address the real issues whether they're security or safety or fairness underneath the red-hot issues of anger and hurt and loss this is the process Framing issues is what I call the heart and soul of mediation. It's not only the skill of mediation, this is where the art of mediation lies. And we are going to spend a good deal of Sunday working on that issue. I'm going to come back to it. It's something that parties don't do themselves, they just fall into positions. It's our job to frame this in a way that's neutral and capable of being resolved by both parties and we're going to take a lot of time on that skill. Then developing options is what in other fields people know as what? What do you call that? Brainstorming. Yeah, this is brainstorming and there's one fundamental rule brainstorming and that is what? Yeah, and no judgments. No judgments. Anything goes. It's a way to open up things that are closed down and get things creative. And then stage five, this is the most fascinating piece. Negotiation is stage five. People coming into your office think it's stage one, right? People come in and they want to negotiate right away. Hey. Uh, I want the VCR, well, I want it. I want the kids, I want the house. They're ready to go right at it. And a great deal of your skill is knowing that doesn't work. And being able to slow, we're going to talk a lot about this process, slow this whole process down enough, knowing that if I take the time to set this stage right and get these other pieces in place first, then when finally down the road we get to negotiation, fascinatingly, negotiation often isn't a big deal in mediation. Sometimes by the time you get there, you get the options on the board and people look at it and say, well, you know, number three, yeah, it's obvious. It's amazing how negotiation often reduces to a small piece of this. I live in Iowa City, Iowa, and I came to the mediation training um, several reasons. First of all, I'd heard wonderful things about Carl and his program from other mediators in my own state. And um, the second thing was I really wanted a chance to get away from home and um, that way I could really focus my attention on what I was learning and the whole program rather than um, being distracted by my normal surroundings. This has been a great course and I'm having a wonderful time and um, the facilities have been beautiful and uh, the information we're given, the, uh, not only the role playing but the booklet and, and the other materials that were uh, given and the recommendations for reading are all uh, very, very useful. I'm coming to the workshop because I'm starting a new midlife career. Very interested in the legal aspects of things, and, and uh, I'm, uh, I think mediation is a great opportunity in an emerging business. I feel like I'm getting in at the ground floor.
Uh, the, the two things that I look for when I train and I look for inside myself when I try to be a good lawyer mediator are these. Number one, you have to do a really good job of listening and listening in a balanced way. When we work as litigators, we tend to have sort of selective listening. In mediation, you have to be really open and listen not only to the facts but the underlying tones as well. And the second thing I look for when I train but with lawyer mediators is to realize that we're no longer in the role of telling people what to do with their lives. People come into mediation and they make the choices. We're simply a helper to help them through a process of exploring their options and making choices. The pace of this is the pace of human emotion. I came to know Carl when I took the uh, training in uh, about 1991. I think the empathy and compassion uh, that has to be part of the process is one of the bottom lines for me and I saw empathy and compassion being valued very highly in the training. I came to work with Carl I guess because Carl asked me at one point to come to work for him as a coach. Uh, I've done that several times. Uh, recently I took one of his advanced workshops, uh, learned a lot in the course of that weekend and so I've just come to have a lot of respect for who he is and what he does and the energy that he puts into this. I, and I know he believes in it a lot and it's very important to see someone teaching it who really believes in it. It's about me and you in conflict and how we are. And Bush and Folger say the promise of this is not just that you get agreement but whether you get agreement or not after a discussion like that, even if it didn't resolve, I feel so much better. I was a better human being today. I think, I feel terrific. I was able to be my better self in this conflict. I don't come away with feeling, frankly, pretty crappy about how I treated you or how I sold myself out. And instead, it felt like a pretty solid discussion. That is what they're saying is people could change in an ethical way. We could be better human beings in the face of conflict. And folks, those of us who live in the United States, we got a lot of conflict in the society. In a society where diversity is as big an issue as it is in this society, maybe in face of the diversity and the conflict that's in the society, if there is actually something that has the potential, the promise, that we could all be here together and be better people, my God, that has relevance for democracy and for human community. We might actually all sort of have a better life together.